Richard Harris is Chief Executive Officer at Port Shelter Investment Management. Richard, good to have you with us here. It's a pleasure as always. Thank you for your time. Uh, you know, I think uh, questions around now how to trade the easing cycle and uh, how much, what, 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 would, what would it mean for emerging markets? Let's uh, kick it off there, uh, Richard. I was saying yesterday the, the great thing, I mean, absolutely wonderful thing would be if you get a if decent re retail sales report and a 50 basis point cut, best of both worlds. Uh, I, I don't know what, what you think of it and uh, your thoughts, EMs, go on. Yes, well, well, of course, maybe the market's already thought of that, which is why it's done quite well. But um, I've been saying for a while, I think this bear market, uh, sorry, this bull market, certainly in the US and Western markets, is likely to continue uh, because the underlying economies are still quite strong. Uh, and the Fed is looks as if it's moving in terms of reducing rates. I'm not sure it has to reduce rates, and I'm not sure if the amount that they're likely to reduce, even if it's 50 basis points, is going to make that much difference. But it does give a lot of sucker to the markets in terms of you know how they should be feeling. So um, all in all, I think that although we have seen a couple of dips where markets have got concerned, um, if the market does come off, the Fed has got plenty of ammunition to uh, turn it around again, and they seem rather susceptible to uh, uh, suggestions that they, they do cut rates if markets fall. So uh, I think at the moment, um, we're in a pretty sanguine position. And referring to emerging markets, you know, that's likely to continue because uh, I think what's happening now is that international investors are looking to say, you know, okay, we've had a good run in the US. What other markets are there? Uh, is it Europe? Um, is it different sectors? Uh, I think emerging markets certainly stands out as one of those. Um, the other one is small caps, but emerging markets is the granddaddy of those in terms of sectors. So uh, the picture, I think, from the international side doesn't look too bad. Richard, hi. Great to have you on the show. So if emerging markets are going to start drawing more attention, then uh, which ones do you think will be top of mind? Where does, where does India fare? Considering that China, I mean, the data is still very weak, at least at a macro level coming out of that country. Well, this is the conundrum, of course. We talk about emerging markets, but, you know, first of all, are they really emerging? You know, if you look at, really, if you look sensibly at uh, even places like India and China, they're not developing anymore. They're very, getting very close to developed. Um, and what we call developed markets are actually starting to come almost post-developed, where you've got a return of, of potholes, debt, and uh, difficulty getting health uh, services. You know, So uh, we've got to be careful about this term emerging markets. Um, China is a very, very different picture now to India. China, I think, is still suffering from the hangover from the lockdowns of COVID. Um, and there's a real loss of confidence. And I think only a big move by the PBOC is likely to see confidence start turning around. Um, in India, we've almost got the opposite situation. Economic growth is good. Um, the picture seems fairly healthy. Even foreign investors uh, generally want to invest. Um, and uh, I think India has perhaps learned from mistakes in the past that if the government or if the authorities tinker too much in the economy, um, you end up actually slowing it down. At the moment, things seem to be relatively open, and that's why India's at an all-time high. So let me ask you, Richard, uh, where would you put uh, every additional $100, say? Would it be India? Would it be gold, which is still flying high? Would it still be... U.S. tech companies, break it up for us. Well, I mean, as a U.S. international, sorry, as an international investor, the U.S. is still very attractive. You know, there are going to be plenty of stories in the tech sector. The tech sector is the darling of our age. You know, previously it may have been TV. Earlier in last century, it was the auto sector. Prior to that, it was uh, things like shipbuilding and railways. There's always a darling of the sector in a particular era, and at the moment it's tech. So it's very difficult not to be in it. Um, but I'm actually uh, recommending to clients that they actually look to diversify a little bit. I'm not quite so keen on the bond markets, even though we may see falling rates. I don't think they'll fall as much as people think. And then that leaves sectors like emerging markets, small caps, where uh, I think uh, more allocation can be made, uh, especially if you feel that there is going to be an, uh, a near term recession in the Western world. So those are the areas I'm looking at with a special attention to 
active EM funds because then they're going to focus more on the individual stocks rather than market cap. Because if you have market cap, then you invest a lot in China at the moment. Um, China's still a little way away from uh, being there. Um, and I think that you need to have an active market process in emerging markets. All right, uh, we leave it there, Richard. Great conversation as always. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Well, uh, that's the first view coming in on global markets.